Here are three software design principles that you need to master, so stay tuned. Now, the first principle is the single responsibility principle. In short, this says that you need to keep everything that you write extremely focused. Now, what I'm going to do is read the official definition, then I'm going to go to the code, I'm going to show you some problematic code that doesn't follow the principle, and then how we can fix it so that it does. Okay. So what this says, the single responsibility principle or SRP, is that a class should only have one reason to change, meaning it should only do one thing. So if a class were to handle multiple responsibilities, it becomes harder to maintain and harder to modify. So by separating concerns into different classes or functions, we make our code cleaner, easier to test, and much more scalable. So here, let's go to the code editor and have a look. So you can see I have some problematic code right here. Now at first glance, it might not look that problematic, but I challenge you, ask yourself what's wrong with this code based on the definition that I just wrote. Now you can see that this code is doing multiple things, and it's not really clear what it's actually supposed to be doing. So here it says that this is an authentication service, so we would assume that what this is responsible for is simply authentication. So something like logging in, well that makes sense, but logging an event doesn't really make sense to be doing inside of the authentication service. We may want to log something, but we shouldn't have the implementation of our logger directly inside of this class. So how can we fix this? Well, we can write some code like this. So notice that yes, the code is a little bit longer now, but what we've done is we've added two classes, an auth service, which we had previously, and the logger class, which now takes over the implementation of logging events. So if we zoom in here, you can see that the logger simply takes this method, it defines the log file, and then in our authentication service, we actually take an instance of this logger and then we can use it within the login method. So this way we've kept things separate, each class has a single responsibility, and if I want to change what the logger is doing, it's very clear where to do that. I change it inside of the logger. I don't need to go and modify anything in my authentication service because it's relying on this logger object. It doesn't care about the low-level implementation, and I can go here, change whatever I need to, and I don't need to change anything inside of my authentication service. If you have a look at an example usage, you can see we create a logger, we pass the logger to our auth service, and then we are good to go and we no longer violate that single responsibility principle. So let's move on to the next principle, but first I do want to let you know that the IDE that I'm using for this video and that I use all the time is called PyCharm. Now this is one of the best IDEs when it comes to working with Python, it has tons of features that make your life easier. Now of course it has features for web development with Flask, FastAPI, and Django, and tons of integrations with all of the major data science and machine learning libraries. Now there's both a community version which is completely free, and a professional edition which is what I'm using here. Now, since I have a long-term partnership with PyCharm, you can actually get a three-month free extended trial of PyCharm Professional Edition if you use the link in the description. Again, it's completely free, it's a great IDE, and I recommend checking it out because you can use it for three months completely for free and see if you like it or not. Anyways, let's move on to the next principle. So again, let's read the definition and then get into the code. Now this says that software entities like classes, functions, and modules should be open for extension but closed for modification. This means that we should be able to add new functionality without changing existing code, and by using interfaces, abstract classes, or strategy patterns, we can make our systems more flexible and more adaptable. Okay, so let's get into the code here and have a look at an example. Now here we have this code, our discount calculator. Now what I want you to notice is that inside of here, we define the different discounts with if statements, right? So we have if discount type is equal to percentage, and then we have kind of the implementation for that particular discount. Now the issue here is that if I wanna add another discount, I need to actually go inside of this method and I need to start writing the discount. So I need to say L if, right, and then you know discount type is equal to whatever the new discount type is, and then I would need to write it in here. Now at first glance, this doesn't seem like a big issue, but the problem is that we've probably already written tests for this code, it's probably used in multiple places, and if I go here and start modifying the existing code, I could break something in my system, and it's really just not the best way to do something at a larger scale. What if I have hundreds of different types of discounts? I don't want them all to be written and hard-coded directly inside of this class, it also means that I now need to pass things like a string as the type 
hype for the discount, which really just doesn't scale well, and it doesn't give me the autocomplete or kind of the type hints that you would want in Python. So there's multiple ways to go about fixing this, but what I'm going to show you here is one of the proposed solutions. Now, again, this is following the open slash closed principle, which means we shouldn't need to change this code in order to add new functionality. So look at this here. Now it's gonna look a little bit complicated at first glance, but just bear with me. So the first thing that we do is we define what's known as an abstract class. Now this is a class that we're going to inherit from and we're gonna override particular methods. In this case, we have this apply method, which will apply the discount. And when we inherit from this class, we're pretty much saying that we must write this apply method as a concrete implementation. A concrete implementation is simply an actual implementation, something that's runnable, that will return some type of value. Whereas in this case, we just have this not implemented error, which is telling all of the subclasses that they need to implement this method. Kind of similar to something like an interface, but we just don't have interfaces in Python, so we use instead an abstract class. Okay, so you can see now that for my discounts, rather than writing them inside of an if statement, I write them as their own class. So I have this percentage discount, which has this apply method, this fixed discount, this seasonal discount, etc. And then I can write as many of these as I want, as long as I inherit from discount. Now inside of these classes, I can implement the method however I want. It doesn't matter what I write inside of the apply method here, so long as it adheres to this method right here, then we can use it inside of what we have now, which is our discount calculator. Now for the discount calculator, we take in some kind of discount strategy and notice that I put the type here as discount. That is this abstract class, which means I can take any of these types of discounts, anything that's a subclass from discount, and as long as it has this apply method on it, then I can use it and it doesn't matter what the actual implementation is. So again, you can see that we inject this implementation. And then we have this calculate method here, which simply calls apply, gets the total and then returns it. So now if we look at the usage, we can see that we can use the discount calculator with any type of discount. And if we want to add another discount here, we don't need to change any of the existing code. We simply write another discount. So we can paste one here and change this to something like seasonal fixed discount. And then we can just say total, you know, minus 10 or something. Obviously we can make this better if we want. And now we have another discount type and I can simply pass that to my discount calculator. I haven't changed any of this code, but I've been able to extend the functionality by writing this new class. So again, we're relying on this abstraction. Our code is now much more flexible. It's easier to test and we can add any types of discounts we want without having to do what we would do previously, which is go into this existing method, write another if statement, modify our tests, etc. I know that this is a little bit of a silly example when it's kind of small pieces of code, but I'm just trying to show you how you can apply these principles in something that's digestible in a short video. So now we're moving on to the final principle, which is the dependency inversion principle or DIP. Now in short, this says that we should depend on abstractions, not concrete classes. It's similar to what we had previously, but I want to show you another example. Now the definition of this is that high level modules should not depend on low level modules. Instead, both should depend on abstractions. This makes the code more modular, testable and interchangeable, allowing us to swap dependencies without breaking the system. Okay. So you can see here that we have some code, which is problematic and violates this principle. The reason it violates this principle is I have this email notifier and I directly couple it or use it inside of this user service. Now at first glance, this may not seem like a big problem, especially because the code is small, but the issue here is that we've directly written in this implementation email notifier inside of this user service class which now means our code is completely limited to just being able to use this. And if I wanted to set up some kind of other notification service, maybe using an SMS, maybe using a push notification or something, I can't do that without modifying this code. I need to go in here. I need to write something like an if statement. Maybe I need to take in a parameter like the notifier type or something. And it's just not ideal for me to be doing this instead, rather than relying on this direct implementation of email notifier, I want to rely on something like an abstraction, something that may always include this send method, but could work with any type of notification system. Again, I know it doesn't seem like a big problem now, but as the system gets larger and larger, you want to make sure that things are as flexible as possible so they can handle any potential use case down the line. 
So let's see what happens now if I change over to my solution. So now let's just look at the user service and notice the user service now relies on an abstraction, which is a notifier class or a notifier interface. Again, in Python, we don't have interfaces, we just have abstract classes. So that's what I'm using right here. Now what this allows me to do is use any type of notifier, something that again inherits from this notifier class, like an email notifier or an SMS notifier or a push notifier and not have to change anything inside of this class. So if we go up here, you can see we have our notifier base class. This is an abstract class, which again defines send with a not implemented error, meaning anything that inherits from this needs to implement this method. And then we can create an email notifier, an SMS notifier, a push notifier, any other type of notifiers that we want, and nothing changes inside of our user service class. We just rely on this abstraction, which is a notifier. And as long as what's passed inside of here implements the send method, then this code works completely fine and we can use it with any type of notification service. So that's that final principle. Again, the dependency inversion principle where we depend on some kind of abstraction like an abstract class or abstract implementation rather than a concrete class. Now I know for small examples like this, it seems overkill. You're writing a lot more code. You could argue this is even more complicated than what we had previously. The point is that we're making this extensible, flexible, and easier to test. It doesn't make sense in really small projects. It makes a lot more sense when your code gets larger and larger, and it's a good practice to get into and something you need to be aware of. So don't take all of the examples in this video as you know 100% correct exactly what you should be doing. It's simply demonstrating the principles so that you're aware of them and you can apply them when they make sense in your own code. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.